Hey, good evening, it's Sabine. I'm going to share a brief update with you for the coming weekend because as I went over my research notes again, I saw some different things that I hadn't found and the Lord gave me some insight and understanding that I hadn't been given before, so I'd love to share it with you. So the heavens declare this weekend. First, we have a Perseid meteor shower and the Lord is shining his flashlight on the constellation Perseus, the Lord as breaker and waymaker. And the peak of that meteor shower is from September 5th until the 21st, emphasizing Jesus coming as a waymaker and a breaker to free the chained bride Andromeda, who is still shackled with her hands to the rock in the heavens, so she can be escorted upward by the winged horse Pegasus beneath her, right into the heavenly throne room, where King Cepheus and Queen Cassiopeia reside, and in between them is a nova star, highlighting that section in the heavens. And I was also reminded that Andromeda, the rock that she is tied to, is connected to Gibraltar. And um, we know that that uh, little island in between Spain and Morocco um, has been fully vaccinated. I think they have like 100 percent uh, rate of vaccination. And so that is a beautiful picture or a striking picture of people being shackled to the lies and the deception of the world. So today the moon conjunct with Saturn in the early morning hours. So that is already behind us. And Saturn is a representation of Satan and Cronus in Capricorn. And that is in the goat section. The right section is the goat section. The left section is the fish springing forth from the atonement by the atonement goat and as i was going outside just now i was wondering shall i make or not make a video and the moon was shining so brightly at me and i could even see jupiter which is rather unique because i live close to a city and there's a lot of light so i usually don't see a lot of stars or planets but this was really beautiful so September 18th, tomorrow, that is what I'm going to focus on right now. Mercury, which is the planet denoting the messenger, the chief speaker or forerunner, is at dichotomy, meeting in its half phase. And Mercury is at Virgo in um, at the section of Spica, the first fruits or the ear of corn she is holding in her left hand. And Mercury is very difficult to spot. And he fittingly embodies the messenger and forerunner John, John the Baptist, who paved the way for the Lord's coming uh, the first time. So Mercury is decreasing in brightness as Jesus, emulated by the sun as the bridegroom, is approaching and increasing and we can find that scripture in john 3 30 35 so the sun or jesus as the bridegroom is crossing the finish line of his race tonight and according to the astronomical border it will rise in virgo tomorrow morning and pass the star zavi java meaning the gloriously beautiful in the constellation virgo and the moon, which is at aphelion or furthest removed from the sun, the moon will conjunct with the king planet Jupiter in the constellation Capricorn at the left or fish portion. And that is the church body springing forth from the sacrificial atonement by the goat. And that same day, Venus, which is the beloved or the David bright type, enters Libra, the altar of redemption. So once again, we see that picture of redemption and the meeting of the bride and the groom in the heavens. Before I continue with the text, let us take a look at the visuals. So I think the 18th is halfway, yes. Mercury at dichotomy, so in its half-half position, September 18th, early in the morning. 
Mercury is decreasing as the sun is increasing. So tomorrow morning is the first morning that the sun will rise completely within the astronomical borders of Virgo near the head star in the forehead of Virgo named Zabi Java or the gloriously beautiful. And the moon will conjunct with Jupiter, the king planet. So once again, we have the meeting of the bride and the king. And this takes place in the constellation Capricorn. So the goat portion is over here. The fish portion is on the left side or the end. And that takes place early in the morning as well. And on that same day, while Venus is below the feet of Virgo, having been birthed out of Virgo, is entering the astronomical border of the constellation Libra, the four-horned altar in the heavens. And that is its original biblical meaning. So the moon at Aphelion, meaning furthest removed from the sun. And the full moon is a little bit later, that is September 21st. And we will get there when we get there, if we get there. <laughs> so, the bridal meeting of the king planet and the moon by the sun, arriving at the star denoting the gloriously beautiful and the beloved Venus redemptively entering into Libra on September 18th. All these events happen on noteworthy days on different calendars. So on the Essene calendar, the Equilux Solar calendar, it is exactly the middle of Solomon's Feast of Dedication. And his feasts, um, he had two feasts of seven days. And the, se and the second feast, on the eighth day, he sent the people home. And we know from Scripture that the feasts took place between Tishri 1 and Tishri 22. But apparently there was an interlude or interval in between the two celebrations when atonement was commemorated. So on the Essene Equilux Solar Calendar, this Sabbath celebration of the Feast of Dedication is exactly in the middle of Solomon's Feast of Dedication in his time. And remember that the Feast of Dedication lasting seven years, uh, seven days, sorry. Jesus embodying the middle candle of the four of the seven armed menorah. And that is the fourth candle. And the Sabbath is the fourth day of the week. So I think that is pretty special. And on Torah calendar, it is the day portion of the Day of Atonement. And on our more modern Gregorian calendar, that was really striking to me because that's the clue I found uh, at first. So we didn't even need all the <laughs> other uh, calendars because there is a beautiful placement of Jesus' naming and circumcision. And that took place on Tishri 8, 3 BC. So we have been able to uncover when he was born, Tishri 1, 3 BC, 9-11, and the eighth day, which was September 18th, 19th, 3 BC, um, he was named and circumcised. And we know that the bride departing will also encompass a circumcision, and then of the entirety of our flesh, our hearts have already been circumcised, but our flesh will be transformed into our glorified state and we will be given a new name on a white stone just like the white outer casing stones of the Kiza pyramid personifying the bride of Christ. So while the sun is in between Leo modeling the Sphinx in Giza and Virgo modeling the uh, Giza pyramids, the naming and circumcision uh, that commemoration takes place on the same day. So Jesus' eighth day, September 18th and 19th, 3 BC, he was named and circumcised. And this is a study uh, and an exchange between Lisa Taylor and Marilyn Inky, two watchwomen from the Five Doves channel. 
they discussed these patterns, but ultimately they pointed to a different date because they had the birth date of Jesus on a different day. So two significant things happened to Jesus on his eighth day, they, they shared. On the eighth day, when it was time to circumcise him, he was named Jesus, the name the angel had given to him before he had been conceived. And we know that points to salvation, and we are waiting for our salvation and our redemption drawing now. So that verse is found in Luke 2.21. He received his name Jesus, and he was circumcised. We know that circumcision is the sign of the Abrahamic covenant, that God made with the Jewish people. And we are the spiritual seed of Abraham. We are saved by grace through faith. Every male among you shall be circumcised. You shall undergo circumcision, and it will be the sign of the covenant between me and you. My covenant in your flesh is to be an everlasting covenant. Genesis 17, verses 10 to 13. There may be a connection between this event and the Church of Philadelphia of Revelation 3, 7 until 13. And they speak about Philadelphia as being the church that God promises to keep from the hour of trial, coming upon the whole world to test those who live on the earth. And we know that Smyrna is also being offered an open door when it comes to the bridal departure. Its members are associated with those who will participate in the rapture. So Philadelphia, the church of brotherly love, and Smyrna, the church of persecution, are uh, included in that party. And to Philadelphia is told the following, Him who overcomes, I will make a pillar in the temple of my God. Never again will he leave it. I will write on him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which is coming down out of heaven from my God. And I will also write on him my new name. Revelation 3, 12. Every overcomer will have the name of God, the new Jerusalem, and the new name of Jesus Christ written on them. Will the new name of Jesus written on our flesh be a sign of the new covenant? Finally, we are told that Philadelphia will be made a pillar in the temple of God. At the time of the rapture, the members of the church, each living stones, will be assembled together as the temple of God. As you come to him, the living stone, rejected by men, but chosen by God and precious to him, you also, like, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. 1 Peter 2 verses 4 and 5 Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and aliens, but fellow citizens with God's people and members of God's household built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. In him, the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple of the Lord. Ephesians 2, 19-22 and Here we can read how in the ancient Jewish culture, a baby's circumcision is a separation, but also a dedication unto God. And it's from Alfred Adersheim's book, The Life and Time of Jesus the Messiah. And in this book, we can read how at the time of the circumcision of the male child in ancient Jewish culture, that boy was separated and fully dedicated unto God. And we can read in the book of Romans 2, 28, 29, how in our case, we don't have outward circumcision, but an inward circumcision of the heart, of our inner parts, so the Lord can work in and through us. And that is confirmed in Jeremiah 4.4. The recommendation or the commendation to circumcise ourselves unto the Lord and remove the foreskin of our hearts. So it applies to both men and women. And by opening our hearts to the Lord, we are secured that we will not be subject to his wrath going forth like fire. It's only our works that will be tried by fire. So the date of his naming and circumcision holds great promises to us, and I hope they will be fulfilled 
this Sabbath. Much love.